Hey guys, it's Tori, and today I'm going to finally be doing a video focused on Anchisathon, which I'm really excited about. As you can tell from the title, I'm going to be discussing my top five favorite Shakespeare plays. Full disclosure, I have only read 15 out of his 36, I believe, plays that he has written, and a wide majority of the ones I've read have been the tragedies. In fact, within the list that I've kind of referred to as I've gone through and checked off which ones I've read, I only have like three or four tragedies left to read by him, so definitely I've read mostly tragedies, so most of the picks on this list are tragedies, but frankly I tend to prefer tragedies anyways, so I mean obviously this list can change, I still have more than half of Shakespeare's works to go through, but these are plays that I do really enjoy and will continue to reread throughout my life because I do enjoy them so much and the language in them just really speaks to me. I'm actually going to start with an honorable mention and that is Macbeth. I have this as an honorable mention because this was one of the first Shakespeare Shakespeare plays I read and it was the first one I read on my own. So the first two I read I think was Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet and I actually had seen the play of Taming of the Shrew. So I had experienced all three of those but this was the first one that I ever read by myself without any class discussion, without visualizing it on stage. And it was also very early in my classics reading, so I was not, my brain hadn't been trained quite as well for the language. And so while I do remember enjoying it, there was a lot that I didn't quite grasp. And this was also several years ago, like almost a decade ago, not quite, it was like seven or eight years ago that I read it. And because of that, I don't remember much about it, but what I do remember, I feel like it has the potential to be one of my top five favorites, but because it's been so long and because of all that, all of the situation that was surrounding it, I can't quite put it into my top five, but I think on reread there's a strong chance it would take the place in this, take the place of something from this top five. So yes, I wanted to give it an honorable mention because it is one I think about and I really have a lot of hope for. It's just been so long I don't remember it and I didn't read it at a really good time in my reading life to really have understood it as well as I could have if I had read it more recently. So anyway, let's get into the actual top five now. In the fifth place, we actually have my most recent read from Shakespeare and that is Julius Caesar. This is a really wonderful play following the downfall of Julius Caesar. Specifically, it primarily focuses on his friend Brutus who was involved in his murder and it's a really interesting tragedy for sure because there's a lot of politics involved, which I mean, in a lot of the others, politics are involved as well, but this one seems a little bit more drawn by politics because the motivations of the conspirators to murder Julius Caesar come from a focus on politics and how politics are going. Not, It's not quite so personal as some of the other murders and things that occur in other Shakespearean tragedies, which I think adds a lot of depth to the characters. I found the characters really fascinating. Obviously the writing, there's a lot of really beautiful writing in this particular play that I really enjoyed. And yeah, I'm really glad I started off my Ancient Athon this year with that because it was a really great read and definitely one I'm excited to return to in the future and hopefully see on stage one day. Number four is the only comedy on this list and that is Much Ado About Nothing. Like I mentioned, I'm more of a tragedy person, but I do like the comedies. Unlike some other people I've heard speak, I actually do find some strong humor in them even when reading them. And there were a few other comedies I had considered for this list such as Twelfth Night and Midsummer Night's Dream. Those are probably my other two favorite comedies, but there's just something about Much Ado About Nothing. Specifically, of course, Benedict and Beatrice are really fascinating to read about. I also found myself laughing a little bit more in this one even though I did just read it, and it's one that I actually, I haven't seen the film still. I've seen parts of it in the past, but I haven't seen the whole thing, so I would really, really love to visit this in the film adaptation with Emma Thompson and Kenneth Brown and just see how I enjoy that. But I do, I just have a lot of positive memories from my experience reading this one and it's one that I also would really love to see live as I have not yet. In the third place I have Othello and if you had asked me a couple years ago 
I probably wouldn't have put Othello this high on this list. Maybe not. Maybe I would have. I don't know. But I, it's not one that when I read it really stood out to me as a favorite. But it's one that when I do think about it, a lot of emotion comes up for me. I just really have an affection for this play. I think Iago is a fascinating evil character. The psychological manipulation and everything that's involved kind of reminds me of books like The Count of Monte Cristo or even Wuthering Heights. And I really appreciate that look at vengeance through psychological manipulation and this does that really well with Iago basically causing Othello to create his own downfall and that's just a revenge story that really appeals to me and I just yeah I really liked a lot about this it's one that stood out in my mind over the years and because of that it's ended up in my third favorite Shakespearean spot at least as of right now again things can definitely change as I continue to read through Shakespearean works but this is definitely one that stands out in my mind for sure. Number two is one that I think may surprise people because I've mentioned this one before as my favorite Shakespeare play, but in recent really months, just the way I've been thinking about Shakespeare plays, I have kind of readjusted what my ranking would be for this one. And that is Richard III. Now I love this play, don't get me wrong. I absolutely adore it. I mean, obviously it's my second favorite, so it's really high up there and it's really close to being my first favorite. I just think my number one that I'll get to in a moment just slightly beats it out, but I do love Richard III. Being a fan of Richard III as a historical figure and very fascinated by him and his life and his reputation as well. I appreciate the way this play not only is just a good play in his own right, there's a lot of action, a lot of political manipulation, corruption, very interesting dynamics between characters, and of course some really great speeches and lines. There's also this sense of the play itself being a political move because of who it was written for. It's written for Elizabeth. It's written for people in Elizabeth's time. And so obviously Richard III is not going to be made to look very good for the Tudors because the Tudors are the ones who took the throne from him. So it's just fascinating to analyze that aspect of the play itself. And I just found it really fascinating. I'm not one just for people who maybe haven't watched my channel before. I do not think Richard III was a saint. I think there's a lot of it, enough strong evidence that he did some pretty awful things in his life to make it so that I can't like disregard it basically. But I also think there's enough evidence to point to the fact that he was a very complicated figure and he wasn't all bad all the time, that he wasn't as conniving and evil to the core as this play, for example, makes him out to be. Which is why he's just fascinating to learn about because I think there's just so little we know about him, but we know just enough that it makes it hard to really understand who he was as a person. And that's always just fascinating to me in history to think of figures and what they really were like and being able to kind of analyze what we know and try to find hints about who the person really was because especially in like more medieval times, even Renaissance times, there's so little record that we just really have to go based on very small amounts of information that we're tying together in our own brains. And so that's why there's so many different opinions about the personalities of people like Richard III, Anne Boleyn, other people. And it's just fascinating to look into. So anyway, that's a whole side tangent, but I do love Richard III as a play as well. It's very exciting. It's one I have seen live. I was able to see it last year and it's pretty brutal, but it's also really, it was really great to watch and yeah, absolutely absolutely love that play for sure. And number one is turning me into a bit of a cliche because it's Hamlet. Now I did not necessarily think of this as my favorite Shakespeare play, partly because I wanted to rebel against being too mainstream, being too cliche, which is stupid because you can just like what you like and who cares how many other people like it. But there, that hipster part of me, that wannabe hipster part of me was like, oh, I'm not gonna say Hamlet's my favorite Shakespeare play. That's what everybody says. But the more I think about it and the more I've just seen different interpretations of it and heard people talk about it. I've just realized I really like Hamlet as a play. There's so many interesting dynamics because while it does have the political side of it, it's also very personal. And so I really love, that's one of the reasons why I like Wars with Roses, going back to Richard III, is that it's very politically based, yes, but it's also very personal. There's a lot of personal aspects to the relationships, to the fight that's going on. And that's what Hamlet has a lot of. I think there's also a lot of interpretation that can go into Hamlet with 
Hamlet, is he mad? Is he, is seeing his father's ghost symbolic or did he actually see a ghost? What's his relationship really like with Ophelia? We don't, we only get really small tidbits of that and that's always fascinating. How much does Hamlet's mother know? It's all just very interesting and there's a lot to think about. Of course, there's some wonderful, wonderful writing in Hamlet that everybody knows about, at least on some level. And this is another one that I have not seen live, but I really, really want to. In fact, I don't think any of these on this list I've seen live, live except for Richard III. I've only seen a few live in general anyway, so that's not too surprising. But it is kind of sad that I haven't seen very many of my favorites live. But anyway, but yes, that is my top five Shakespeare plays. Let me know down below if you agree with anything on my list, if you would change some things, what are some of your favorites, what are your top five, if you know what your top five are. How do you feel about Shakespeare in general? Are you a fan of his? Are you not? I will say for me, I actually, he's one that I want to love more and I think I'm slowly, gradually learning to love him more, but I'm still learning to train my brain to understand his language, to really appreciate his method of writing because I think a lot of the attraction of Shakespeare is his poetical writing style. I think that's what really makes him stand out as a writer and I'm not necessarily the most well-versed in appreciating writing style. I don't know if that makes sense, but I really, when I read, I primarily have focused on the plots in the past, plots and characters. And so writing style, while certain writing styles do stand out to me, it's not, I'm not as gripped necessarily by certain sentences or anything, but I'm kind of trying to train my brain to notice that a little bit more so I can find greater appreciation, especially for classics. And Shakespeare is just part of that. I really want to gain better appreciation for his writing style so I can learn to love his plays even more. I also think it really does help a lot, especially with the comedies, but with all of them to be able to see them actually performed because it just adds a lot more to context and understanding dynamics a lot better. So I definitely would like to continue to increase the amount I've seen on stage. But yeah, I'm totally rambling now. So we'll end this here. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.